This show is sponsored by the National Association for Primary Education. Hello, my name is Mark Taylor and welcome to the Education on Fire podcast. The place for creative and inspiring learning from around the world. Listen to teachers, parents and mentors share how they are supporting children to live their best authentic life and are proving to be a guiding light to us all. Hello, thank you so much for deciding to spend some time with us here on the Education on Fire podcast. Today I'm going to be chatting to you just on my own, giving you some of my thoughts and understanding of, of what I've been hearing in the press recently about children being behind and having to have catch-up lessons. And it's just really, really giving me some sleepless nights in some ways in terms of what is it that everyone believes that they need to be catching up with. I mean, I know we do have a standardised testing here there's this sense that you should be at a certain level at a certain age. But of course, that's different for every child anyway. It's different depending on your background and your circumstances and your your family support and, and all manner of things. And we've just been through this global pandemic. You know, we've just had this chance to really learn so much about what life is about. You know, the value of love, the value of family, of being safe, of understanding what it's like for the world to change on its axes in in one fell swoop. You know, we've learned so many things. We've actually, as a as a nation, as human beings, and and a global nation, really come together in one understanding of what's important in order to work together to try and fight a virus which has had the potential to really be catastrophic in so many different ways. And these things that we've learned, this opportunity that we've had, is something which children would have never had the opportunity to learn or to feel or to understand had this not happened. And while it might have affected the amount of lessons they had, certainly the amount of face-to-face lessons they've had or the amount of schooling they've had in a traditional sense, what they've actually learned and what they've been exposed to could be incredibly valuable for them as they grow up and, and, and as, as they get older. I think one of the things that we forget about is the fact that we are learning all the time from the moment we're born until the moment we die. And it's up to us to decide how we go about making the most of that. And having all these things about you should be doing this or you've lost out of this or you need to catch up because you're now behind because you haven't been in school for a few weeks. It's almost like giving a plaster to someone who's broken their leg. You know, it's that kind of you can't expect someone to run if they've got a broken leg. It takes time. You have to heal. You have to look after yourself. You have to relax. You have to give yourself what you need to then rebuild and to start moving on. You know, if you had a race that you were going to run two weeks after you broke your leg, you have to reframe what your objective is. You might still want to win a race, but it's going to be a different race at a different time, at a different event, maybe further down the track. And now this is kind of where I think we are now. You know, we've learned so much about ourselves and and so many different things, even to do with learning, bearing in mind our different circumstances. And so we now have to just reframe that, you know, if you want to learn more of the subject and curriculum material, which you think you've missed out on, then we can, you know, we can do that. We can organize that. If you sort of feel like there's a need to be able to actually get us to learn an amount of subjects or an amount with the amount of knowledge within a subject, then why do we have to do that for a certain time next year or for testing, which is going to go on in the next academic year? Can we not just have the fact that we're going to be able to put all these things together and move forward as a nation with the understanding of what we've learned and have that as a real basis of of knowledge and empathy and understanding for what the world has been through and then have that as a good understanding of where we then want to move on to for. Okay, so everyone, even if you had to stop an entire year's education and everyone was then just a year older, does that actually matter? Why does that really affect everything so much? Only because we have all of these things in place which says it has to look a certain way. And surely the one thing that we know from everything that we've been through is there is no certain anything. Something can come along and just change the world in an instant. And you have to adapt and you have to be able to morph and you have to understand what's going on and then put in place what it is that you need. You use the science, you use things around you. I think from an education and learning point of view, you can only do what's right for you despite politicians, despite people telling you, we're now behind or we actually now need to really focus on catching up. Just think, what is it that I actually think we want to learn now? Does that involve having extra tutoring? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. 
does it have the fact that maybe I now have a different understanding about life so I'm going to focus my learning in a different way and that of course if you're a parent and also if you're a teacher how you want to bring that across depending on the age of the children you know having the idea of mentors having the idea that you could learn at home we know everyone can learn at home if you've got access to the internet and a computer because so many children have been doing that we understand the sorts of support children need you know is it very hands-on when they're not in the classroom or are they able to get on on their own and learn in their own way again depends on the age of the child and the sorts of things that they're learning i think from our personal experience it definitely is a fact that there are some subjects that work really well like that online and some of the more creative and some of the subjects where you need a lot more interaction don't work so far and a lot of what I've come to to understand and what I've seen in these recent weeks is that it, most of these subjects uh, that have been really pushed and people have spent a lot of time really making sure are there for the children are the ones that they knew would then be tested further down the line or the ones that do have that kind of question and answer <laughs> which they could actually do which just sort of emphasizes really the, situ- the situation and the systems that we were in before and we've got this opportunity now to actually do things differently and understanding and a, and, a, and a point of view where we think what is important for us going forward what have we learned what can we learn how can we put all these things together lots of the episodes that we've actually recorded in recent weeks we've talked about how education could look different and I think from what we're hearing from politicians from what we're seeing in terms of this we're behind we need to do catch-up lessons nobody's thinking that it's going to be any different it's going to be the same and we're then going to try and shoehorn people into exactly what that looks like and it'll be interesting as the GCSEs and the A-levels come out in the next few weeks how that having to be different really looks in reality and how that then follows through as they go on to universities and and all of that system starts to get put in place so those are my thoughts Actually, the only thing we can do is what we can do personally, either as children, depending on our age and how much control we have, or certainly as parents and teachers. What can we emphasise? What can we put in place? How can we teach in a different way? How can we make it be so simple for children to just understand that we are always learning? We're always wanting to improve. We're always wanting to gain knowledge. And sometimes that isn't about just filling our brains with the new facts. Sometimes it's about being more aware of who we are. Having an understanding at the moment about the impact that this has had on our lives is incredibly important because, you know, we don't even know the full impact of having so much, so many people in lockdown for such an amount of time of not being able to interact with people you know is it a hiatus and then we then carry on or is it a complete change forever and these are the questions we'll find in time we need to give ourselves the opportunity to have the time to ease into that to analyze it as it comes through and not feel like we need to get back to feel like we're behind that we need to catch up we are where we are we always are where we are and that analogy of having a broken leg for me is just a really great one because You can't run a race next week if you've got a broken leg. It has to look different. You have to think about how you're going to rehabilitate, what you're going to do afterwards, and how you're then going to frame that to win your next race. You're still going to run. You're still going to have the opportunity to compete. It's just not going to be in that square box that you thought it was going to be before the incident happened. And I think that's so important for us now. Let's change our framework. Let's decide how we want it to look different. But let's take as much control as we can personally in order to support our children in their well-being and give them the opportunity that this was a global pandemic that we've all been through. Let's take the most out of it we can in terms of what we've learned as human beings, of what we learned about how we learn in school and out school and online and all those things that we've done and make that move forward to give ourselves the opportunity to have the best learning we possibly can in a way that really supports us but with the understanding of the global emphasis that's happened during this time thanks for listening to the education on fire podcast for more information of each episode and to get in touch go to educationonfire.com education is not the filling of a pail but the lighting of a fire I'd like to thank the National Association for Primary Education for their continued support and sponsorship of this show. NAEP are currently supporting teachers by producing fortnightly videos which cover themes like art, school trips and literacy. Also, they are giving away e-copies of their professionally produced journal, Primary First. To find out more about the association, please go to nape.org.uk. That's n-a-p-e dot org dot uk.